Hello, this is the comparison between the Mobile One Four Six versus Mobile One Four Nine. As you can see, these are just amazing pens to look at. Now let's get into what the packaging comes in for each one. The One Four Six, the Unicef version, comes in this Unicef packaging, and the One Four Nine comes in this big box. And there's actually a box that's outside of this, but I don't want. To, but you get the idea. In comparison, as you can see, they're pretty much the same length. The difference between these two is the girth, that's that's about it. And the band, it says Mobile One Mastership, whereas on the 149 it says number 149, whereas 146 doesn't say anything else. Because as you can see, pretty much the same length, it's just 149 has a lot more girth to it. The clips are relatively stiff, and but they're still very practical. The 146 is the Unicef version, so it has more detail on the cap. They brought the Snowcap logo that says that they're a mobile pen. And yeah, 146 is very elegant. They're both platinum trims. The bands are the same, as I mentioned. The difference between the 149 has the number 149 on it, whereas the 146 doesn't. And it's three rings, which is proprietary to Mobile One, actually. If anyone else tries to use that, they get sued. And they both have piston fillers. They're both piston fillers, so it's very smooth pistons to operate. There's no complaints there. Same with the 146. They both hold good enough ink. Uh, 149 holds about maybe like 0.2, at most like 0.3 in a good day, more ink than the 146. But it's good enough ink for daily handwriting, daily writing, the nibs, and the nib sections. They're just gorgeous to look at. As you can see, number 146 is a number 6 size nib, 149 is a number, size, number 9 size nib. They're both two-tone nibs, and they're both mediums. It doesn't label on mobile nibs, but they're both mediums. The nib sections are similar in how they are structured. In terms of girth, as you can see, in 49 is about twice as much. And which comes, that's basically where the difference is the nib and the girth of the pens. They both have the striated ink windows. So it's like prison style ink windows. You can tell how much ink you have left. It's a lot easier to tell than you would think. Then, in terms of how they hold, 149 is a lot more thicker, but it's still very comfortable in my hands. I don't have big hands or small hands, yet it's still very comfortable. 146 is comfortable on my hands as well, it's a lot slimmer. And for longer handwriting, longer writing sessions, they're both very comfortable in my opinion. When they're posted, as you can see, the 149 is bigger than just nib, but just in general. And in terms of how it feels when it's posted, it feels very balanced. Keep in mind, both of these pens are fully precious resin, what they call it, which is session plastic. Same for 146, it's very balanced, feels comfortable when you post it. The reason that it's lightweight is because not only is it a plastic pen in overall, the piston rod is also plastic, so which makes it very lightweight. Now, let's get into general comparison to give an idea of how big these pens are. Uh, it's compared between the 146 and 149, but I just want to give an idea of how big these pens are actually. You have the 1005, the Mito 5, which is their counter competition, essentially. And yeah. Then you have the Palette Custom Urushi to give an idea of how big this pen actually is. Now, we've got some nibs. As you can see, 149 has a similar nib to the custom Roshi, and they're just gorgeous nibs. 146 is looks a lot smaller, but keep in mind it's number six size nib, and in terms of filling up, it's a piston for as I said, so it's easy to fill it up. It holds good enough ink. In this case, I inked it up with Montblanc Jazz Blue. Now I'll show writing samples of both of these pens so you get an idea of how they write. And let's start with the Montblanc 146.
146 is this version is the UNICEF 2017 version, so it's a special edition, it's a limited edition version, so it's not very readily available anymore, but you can still get it. It's a medium nib, it's a 14 karat medium nib compared to the Montblanc, which is an 18 karat medium nib. The 146 used to be 18 karat back in the day, specifically in France, because of the law where to be a solid gold nib had to be at least 18 karat but now as you can see most modern nibs are 14 karat and it's still stiff so it's a stiff nib if you want a very like soft nib then you should look into Pelican but the Montblanc has this feedback to it which is not a negative feedback but it's still feedback nevertheless so if you're not comfortable with feedback then this might not be the pen for you and it is not just audible feedback with Sailor it's mostly audible feedback. The way to know is you put headphones over your head, like noise canceling headphones, put music on or something, then write. If you feel any feedback in terms of actually the paper, that means that there's actually like physical feedback. But if it's very smooth and you don't hear that it's very smooth, then it means it's just mostly audible feedback. In this case, it's a combination of both. There's physical and audible feedback with both 146 and 149. 146 is a relatively wet pen, so it's not as wet as like a Visconti, but it's still on the wet side, which makes it very enjoyable. 149, on the other hand, is a number 9 size nib, as you can see. So how you write is a little bit more different because of how big the nib is and obviously the girth, but they're both very comfortable for me, but that might not be the case for everyone. It's the 18 karat gold nib. You would think, because it's 18 karat gold, you would think it might be a little bit more soft, but it's not actually feels exactly the same in terms of how stiff it is. So keep that in mind if you're thinking of the 149 because it's a bigger nest, it's gonna feel more soft. That's not the case. And yeah, the nib is great to look at. Two sound nib, so it's very aesthetically pleasing. And similar to 146, I would mention about the feedback, where it's a combination of both physical and audible feedback. That applies to the 149 as well. There is still physical feedback, so keep that in mind. Most people enjoy that. Mumble 146 and Mumble 149 is good for people that take notes a lot because when you're taking notes, you don't want something that's too soft that can lead to spraying the tines and you don't want to damage the nib. But because it's a hard nib, it's easy to take notes in. You don't have to worry about it. It's gold nib as well, so it gives it more feel to it. So that's one of the good things about both of these pens. When it comes to verse writing, Neither is the 146, neither the 149 are very good at it. It's very tooty. I have good line variation, which is expected, as I mentioned. But still very good pen to write with, and it's very enjoyable. In terms of wetness, it has the same amount of wetness, similar wetness to the 146. It's medium to slight wet. It's not like a gusher, but you can always get it customized, so it's not a problem. Now let's get into the side view of the handwritings for people that enjoy that. As I mentioned, 146 and 149 are just gorgeous nibs and they're both re very reliable pens, so you can't go wrong with neither of them as long as you have the money for it because these are very expensive pens. The problem with mobile nibs for most people is sometimes when you get it out of the box, it doesn't write perfectly. And I've heard stories about this for a pen that's expensive, that should not be the case, but that's the reality. But also a lot of people have heard good things about it where it writes perfectly out of the box. Supposedly they tune all their nibs by hand, so no pen outside the box should be a dud nib, but that still happens. It is not as common or mostly happening like with Visconti pens, where Visconti is just more than half the time, you probably will get a bad nib because the quality control is really bad with Visconti. But that is not the case with Montblanc, just so we're clear. There's, they have some problems, but for the most part, they're very reliable right outside the box. Now let's get into just comparisons between them and the pros and cons between them. Let's start with the 146. Has it Number 6 size 14 karat nib, so it's a smaller nib, and but still very fun to write with, 
And for people that somewhat smaller hands, that prefer smaller pens or slimmer pens, this can be a great choice for you. And the nib isn't too small. In the picture you see, it makes it small or than it really is, but it's not actually that small. And it is slimmer. So it's gonna be a good thing and a bad thing for most people. For me, it's okay, but I prefer the 149 more because I like the dirtiness. Keeps my hands more balanced. But if you have smaller hands, obviously it's better for you to have slimmer and the price. This is a limited edition or special edition, you know, 2017 edition. So it's a lot more expensive than regular Montblanc nibs, mobile pens in the 146 range. But if you buy it brand new, obviously you pay a lot more. But I bought all of my Montblanc pens discounted or secondhand. So if you do it that way, usually you should get it for around 300, 350. And let's get into the 149. 49 has a number 9 size 18 karat nib and it's a big nib and it's a beautiful two-tone nib which makes writing very aesthetically pleasing as you can see. The thing is both of these nibs they both write similar so it's not like you're buying one nib over the other because this one writes differently. They both write similar, they both have feedback, they both have hard stiff nibs so it's about the size of the nib and that's about it, the thickness. So as I mentioned, 146 and 149 pretty much have the same length. The 149 is a lot more thicker. So that can be a problem for some people, but if you have bigger hands or prefer thicker pens, then this is a perfect choice for you. And the price. Price is $140, so which is very expensive. And for a pen that this expensive, for both of these, my problem for both of these is number one being they're both precious resin or what they call precious resin, plastic pens. Meaning, I understand that like there's a lot of pens in the market that are plastic, but they're not this expensive. And my problem isn't just that it's plastic. My problem is that the pistons for the, the piston filling mechanism is also plastic. Like Pelican, which is like 30 to 40 percent less expensive, uses brass pistons and it's a lot more reliable in the long run. But Montblanc used to do this in the past, but over time, the price have increased and the quality has decreased. So, the price will be a lot more justifiable if they have brass pistons. For both of these pens, you're paying at least 40 to 50 percent more for just the brand name. The problem with both of these is that it's very difficult to clean. What I mean by that is, as you can see in the video, you need two, you need a tool that's parallel to one another to fit into those holes. To unscrew the nib sections, which makes it difficult to clean for both of them because if you can't unscrew it, then you have to clean it the regular way of how you ink the pen, which is the piston filling and over and over, which is very inefficient and it's very tedious and very annoying. I wish they made it that so you can unscrew it very easily like the Pelican nibs and that would make life a lot more easier, but you can't ask for accessibility and convenience with the Mobile One, can you? But that's about it. If you have the money and if you like the look of these pens, you can't go wrong with it. I use them mostly for notes because I use, I write notes very fast and I don't have to worry about my nibs. Even though it's gold nibs, it's very good for note taking. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.